at this, look, I just started. We're already drenched in sweat. So what's up y'all? Welcome to another adventure Saturdays. Today's adventure, I'm gonna be heading to the Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. We're gonna take a track through, uh, lots of nature to see. Actually, we're gonna go up to the summit. Um, it's the highest point on mainland Singapore. I could have taken a bus, but I chose to start my adventure to the summit of Bukit Timah Hill on the Green Corridor. It's called the Green Corridor for some pretty obvious reasons. Beings from all walks of life make good use of this tranquil green space. Some are friendly, while others prefer to satisfy their hunger. The midday sun and the humidity was relentless. I actually also took a cue from this guy and found some shade. Part of this, like the history of this entire pathway that I'm on is that it used to be uh, a railroad. The rally behind me was the old Bukit Timah railway station. was once one of the stopping points on the train from Singapore over to uh, Malaysia. On weekends, this is full packed with people trying to get like the usual cliche railway shop. This also could be uh, another hot spot for photos as you can imagine why. They kept the authentic rails and then just built the road up to the level of the rail so that obviously you won't trip on it. So much construction everywhere. As you would have seen for the last like six kilometers, the path was paved, it was nice. But here, right here is where that changes and you go off into like a dirt path. Man, look at this, this place is unreal. So this is the Singapore Quarry. Within the Bukit Timah area, there are three sites which were once used to source granite rocks. In Haiti Quarry, Dairy Farm Quarry, and the Singapore Quarry. Majestic cliff faces, dense foliage, and the presence of water provide a paradise for both humans and wildlife. To quote Bob Ross, this was a happy little accident. So, now we're actually gonna head back to the entrance to Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. I actually missed the entrance, so got backtracked for like, I think another two kilometers and then to see you when we get there. About one hour ago, it was actually right here at this spot and this is where you should have made the right turn to go up to Bukit Tima Hill. I'm gonna tell you why this looks so different. So I've been here before, I've always accessed it from the street, but I've never been into Bukit Tima uh, accessing it from the rail corridor. Anyways, we back on track. So these towers right here, those are actually at the summit. It's literally going to be just an uphill climb to get to the summit. But first, there's a information board. Bukit Tima was important to both the British and the Japanese for a couple of reasons. Number one, there was a weapons depot or stash in Bukit Tima. Number two, two of Singapore's reservoirs are within the Bukit Tima area, and this is directly linked to the island's water supply. Number three, and probably the most, I guess, important to both sides, the main road that leads to Singapore City actually goes through Bukit Timah area. So to lose this area would literally mean that the British stood a high chance of losing Singapore. On February 8th, 1942, the first wave of Japanese soldiers, they landed in the Northwest of Singapore. On the night of February 10th, 1942, two days later, the Battle of Bukit Timah Hill began. By the dawn of 11 February 1942, Japanese troops reported to their commander, Tomoyuki Yamashita, that they had seized Bukit Tima. The road to the city was open. So, you know, like I said a little earlier, let me speak for myself. Uh, I thought that Singapore was, you know, like boring, if that's the right word, but there wasn't a whole lot to do. And as a result, that kind of impacts the way how you experience the country. I think by committing and attaching yourself to like history, it makes a more enjoyable experience, you know? 
What you're looking at is one of Singapore's last primary rainforests. This massive tree and many others like it are some of the oldest residents here. They provide a home for a wide diversity of wildlife, including these guys. In days gone by, all the other forested areas except for this one were used for timber. This forest was protected by law, and then in 1990, it was declared as a nature reserve. Extracting granite from the hill was a big business up until the mid-1900s. Since then, the quarry has been transformed into a place for recreation and punishment. Man, this hill is no joke. Just taking it one step at a time. <laughs> If I'm honest, it did feel like punishment climbing these final flight of stairs. I worked hard to get to this point and I felt, I felt like I deserved a reward. But before we get there, let me ask you this. When you think of reaching a summit, what images come to mind? Okay, keep those images in your head. While I've been here in Singapore, I have trekked through the jungle to the top of Mount Faber. And this was my reward. I've taken a boat over to Pulau Ubin, climbed up Puaka Hill and this was the reward. And now, here I was, less than 50 meters away from my reward. <laughs> 360 degrees of trees? Brilliant. There's a restricted area, there's a hut to cry at, and this rock to snap photos of your achievement. So you can post it on Instagram. Well, there you have it. We made it to the summit. It's just trees and towers. Of course, I was extremely underwhelmed. But what I did see was another information board. And on it, they mentioned that there was once a bungalow at the summit. It was rented to tourists back in the 1980s for $2. Due to disuse, it was torn down and later replaced with telecommunication towers. Twenty thousand steps. Well, it's nineteen thousand two hundred seventy-four. We didn't explore the full park because there's a couple other like offshoots of trails and stuff that um, that you can do over here. There's also a, a, a mountain bike trail, so there's a lot more exploring you could that you could do there. But right now, time, energy, definitely against me. So I'm gonna call it quits and head home. Cool stuff. So I just literally got to the summit. Yeah, the summit. Uh, the stomach. No, summit. Oh, summit. I thought you said the stomach. I was like, what's that? The stomach. If I get to the stomach, that means something eat me, babe. That can only be a shark or a whale or cannibals. 